Praise the Lord. What a wonderful day. To be alive and knowing Jesus. Amen. To truly know him. Amen. And to know that when we live in this life and we're operating in everything God's given us to do and just being obedient to do it, it's just, it's just so good to know that we can, can truly know someone, I won't say someone like Jesus, but that's, that's just such an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> to truly know him yeah. and to have him with us and to walk with him and he with us in every part of our life. And I, I tell you what, it just means more and more. I think as, it, as we continue to grow, continue to, to live, and we continue to understand and, and grasp a hold of the truth of you know, when we, when we really get our minds made up and we are not just playing, but we're serious about our relationship with the Lord, that is, it's, it's a special thing. And that's, that's something that I think we, we overlook from time to time. The closeness and the, how special each day can and should be. When we have that fellowship with our Lord. And it's available to all. It's available to all of his children. It's not just for a select few. God doesn't play favorites. He doesn't show favoritism. The scripture says as we draw nigh unto God, he will draw nigh unto us. And that's, that is a, it's an opportunity that we need to daily take advantage of. I said we. Take you know, this is this is not someone proclaiming something that he doesn't need himself. I need it probably more or as much as anybody in here. To know that, to walk in that, that it not just be something that we put a label on ourselves as being a um, as being a Christian, but that it's a real experience. And it's a life-changing experience. And that's one thing I want to thank God for this morning, for understanding more and more as the revelation of the message of the cross is continually to be and unfolded to me, that it, it makes me more aware of just how real Jesus is to me. Yeah. How really he really is to me. Past a certain age, there gets some urgency, more of a urgency to <laughs> Amen, brother. Oh. Praise God. Well, let's uh let's look this morning beginning in verse 13 of chapter 3. As um last Sunday's brother Rodney was going through then Pretty well went through the entire chapter. The Lord kept bringing some things back to my mind through the week because I was really wanting to go into chapter 4. But anyway, I want to begin in chapter 13 of, of verse, I mean, chapter 3, verse 13 in the book of James. This is, of course, still James is dealing with the tongue the words of our mouth, the things that we speak. He says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. Those, those two, or those three words right there, kind of, you know, of, of a lack of better words, leaped off the page to me in a way, the meekness of wisdom. Wisdom has a name. I believe y'all pretty well know the name of wisdom. Wisdom Jesus is wisdom. Let me just say it that way. Jesus is wisdom. 
And we have no better example than to live and to walk this life as the one Jesus set for us to walk in. But there's only one way we can do it. We can't do it, you know, by following a set of rules. We do it by trusting and choosing to trust in Him and His finished work. And then the enabling power of the Holy Spirit works in us that we can show, we can show, you know, through the lie, our life. We can, we can allow it to be seen through our life because of the power of the Spirit working in us to change us. It's not that we are um, continuing by willpower to try to do something that we can't do. Our will begins and ends when we choose to believe that he made a way for us. And we're going to follow that way. Our willpower. You know, there's far too many Christians that are trying to please God simply by willpower. And that's automatically what everybody knows to try to do whenever we first come to him. But we cannot please God with just our willpower. We have to will to believe him. We have to, to make that decision that I'm going to believe what he said. And that we believe in what he said the, in the, the way that he said it. I want to I want to just take a moment this morning, and I, I didn't know for sure, but I really felt that I need to do this. I want to take a chapter from the book of Proverbs very quickly, chapter 8. And I'm going to read through it. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places by the way of the palaces of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. O ye simple, understand wisdom, and ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. For my mouth shall speak truth and wickedness, is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing forward or perverse in them. They are all plain to him that understandeth, and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction, and not silver, and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it. I wisdom to well with prudence and find out knowledge of witty inventions. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance and the evil way and the forward mouth do I hate. It. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding, I have strength. By me kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me, yet durable riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yet than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I lead in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning or ever the earth was. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills was I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, 
nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there, and he set a compass upon the face of the depth. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth, and my delights were with the sons of men. Now therefore hearken unto me, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that heareth me, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. Whoso findeth me findeth life, and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. The true person that that truly, the Christian that truly takes these words to heart, I think you can say it that way, is one that totally puts his or her faith totally and completely in the finished work of the cross. Because it's only by that that we can ever obtain this of what we just spoke. To be a part of it, to let it work in us, to build in us, to strengthen us. And it's only by the power of the indwelling of the Spirit of God that can keep that old man, that old corrupt nature, in a place of death. Oh, I'm telling you. I mean, it's, it is so easily to accommodate. Oh, yes. It's so easily to, because it's always an understanding or our, our misunderstanding on our part. Many times, I think, we just fail to realize the seriousness of it. We fail to realize that it's, it's something that is there and it will be resurrected if given the opportunity. But the meekness of wisdom. You know, meekness in a Christian walk is something that is very much needed. We've got a lot of times Christians, they don't want to fool that meek stuff. They don't want to truly exhibit meekness. It's, it's, it's something we all must face. We all must deal with it because we all still... There's something still about us that wants to promote ourselves, that wants to put ourselves first, that wants to exhibit our rights ahead of somebody else. Meekness is, I think, when whenever it is exhibited, it is a true mark of heavenly wisdom at work Amen. in the life of the Christian. You know, many. Many people may look at it and sneer and jest and, and say, oh, well, you know, he's just meek and mild or whatever, whatever, that's fine. But to truly know and understand when heavenly wisdom is at work, then that is evidence that there's something taking place of something that's already happened, of something that's continuing in one's heart and life. Because, you know, you can't just go around practicing true meekness in your own self, your own strength. It's impossible. That's right. It has to be brought about by the Spirit of God. It has to be worked in us. And I'm not just talking about it as an outward thing. I'm not just talking about something that as a, a chameleon would change its color, okay, in its surroundings. You know, that's an animal that that adapts in a 
through its surroundings by the changing of the skin tone of its scales, the skin under the scales, maybe I haven't done too much research on it, but anyway, y'all get the point. To blend in, to, to, to be unnoticed, to appease. God is always to be our complete supply. And think about those words just for a moment, because that is, I, that's something that, that I have to understand. I have to believe that. It's, it's, it's not no more about me, but it's about trusting and knowing that God is sufficient to supply everything that I'm in need of. Everything that pertains to this life. Everything that pertains to living this life in Godliness. Everything that comes when it, it, whenever we label ourselves as Christian, as Christ, as putting, you know, Jesus Christ first in our life, we have, have, have called upon that name, and we are, now that we are witnesses unto him, we are to be his ambassadors in this world, and that we carry with that something that matters when we name the name of Christ. What are we exhibiting to those around us? What are we showing the world? Well, that person calls them a Christian, and they do this, they do that, they, they whatever, whatever. That's what people see. They say, well, it's okay to do this, that, no, they're a Christian. They say they're a Christian. They, they go to church every day, and they, they do this. What do people see? But, you know, as good as God is, he will not force his supply upon us. That's right. He will not force it upon us. If we choose not to accept that and believe that and walk in that, he will not force it. That's right. Because he is so good. But it is there for us to take that advantage of. And this, this right here, this, this is just something that really I guess it, it, the Lord dealt, dealt with me on and just to understand, to know that, hey, you know, even, even though things may be looking pretty good sometimes, you ain't where you need to be. You need to continue to believe. You need to continue to accept that and know that it's my word working in you, changing you, making you into what I want you to be. Because in verse 14, then we see something here that, he says, but if bitter envy and strife, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. That's that salt water coming forth from the same fountain that we talked about last Sunday morning. Those things ought not to be. The salt water that would, would come forth and be bitter, would not be heavenly, it would not be something that, that pleases God. But when we have, and we walk, and we believe in it, and we walk in the understanding of the freedom that Christ gives through the work of the cross, it blows away all of that. It, 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 it blows it out of the way. It, it, it purges it out that the fresh water can flow. The, the, the sweet water can, can come forth because that is what is so so much needed church it's, it's needed it's every, everybody needs this it's yes. not just, yes. just for us a few we all need this that is a that is something that we need that we always realize the significance that it plays in our Christian experience. Because I want it to be a practical experience. Yes. I, I like things that are practical. Not just a bunch of stuff just to sit around, you know, just and, and there's 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 a great blessing in being able 
to know how to decorate things. What I mean, that's that is wonderful. And, and different people have different tastes. The whatnots are, are, are placed on the, the shelves and the areas of the home and things to, to, to make it your home, make it who you are. That's great. But, you know, and I, I learned a lesson one time, and you do that when you've been married a few years. <laughs> and it comes time to give gifts. You know, the lady of the house doesn't always just want something that's practical. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> amen? <laughs> All you ladies said amen. <laughs> they don't want things that are just practical. I like practical things. <laughs> you know, things that, that just work. You got to buy it anyway. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> y'all see, y'all know where I'm coming from. <laughs> because... Getting the electrical fixed or the plumbing fixed is not a good gift. Yeah, uh, that's right. We may like it, but that's not a present. Some, sometimes the, uh, the necessity outweighs, I guess, the, the, the opportunities. But anyway, practicality, it definitely has its place. I'll say it that way. But in the, in the Christian experience, really we need to know that if, it's, if it doesn't work, if it's not practical, then of what value is it? What has it done, you know, in me? What, what can I do to share this with somebody if it's not working to me? So you, you get my point. It's just a decoration. It's just a decoration. It's just something... That, that we polish and we shine on the outside, but the inside That's right. That's right. is still full of, of, of uncleanness. That's what Jesus said. You know, it's, it's, they, that's what they focused on, was trying to keep the outside looking good, but the inside was rotten. So that's, that's what we need to know, that Christianity is, is that's not true Christianity, Amen. to live like that. And, and Jesus made the way that we don't have to do that. We don't have to, to, to live like that. We don't have to, you know, let that be a part of our Christian walk. Yes. You know, because, I mean, people, people are paying attention. They, they look at you. Yes, they do. And it's, it's important how well we, and as James is bringing these out, all this out, I don't know if James really knew at this point hard to keep the outside, outside, the inside from eventually showing them. So finally, it people, is. Go, so finally people go. It is. <laughs> because it, and it, and it's so easily sometimes, I'm just going to say this, we can just, by the way that we look when we say something, really reveal our heart of the matter. That's how easily it is to show itself. And then we all, I mean, <laughs> we all are there, you know. But letting it work in us and change us is, is the greatest life. Amen. The, the life of true liberty, true freedom in Christ, that knowing that we're not held down by religious bondage yes. and just that it's something that we're doing, that we're just, you know, continuing to do this, and, and it's just, where's the fruits of it? Where's the fruits? What, you know, what's, what am I getting from this? This is something that I think through this that the Lord was speaking and showing me in this, but the bitter ending and strife, glory not and lie not against the truth. There's one thing that Paul said that he should glory in, in Galatians 6 and 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. By whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. That's it. You know, and as the Holy Spirit was giving these words to James, James may not have understood all of this and knew all of this, because I truly believe that that the revelation of the finished work of the cross was given to Paul. That's right. 
okay? It was given to Paul, and this, if I'm not mistaken, this was written before, James was written before then. I may have that not exactly correct, but y'all help me with that. This wisdom, verse 15, descends not from above, but is earthly. Earthly. It is sensual. It is devilish. The wisdom, you can basically say the wisdom of this world and the way that this world operates and the wisdom that we were, you know, when we were born, we were born into this. We were born under it. We were raised under it many times. But when we came to Christ, when we came to, to know Jesus Christ, it's a whole new way of living. Yes. It's not to be mixed with the old. Amen. The old way of thinking, the old way of, 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 of problem solving mm -hmm. would be a good word. That's right. Earthly and sensual, it, it deals with the natural things. The things of that of of that man knows. Man is our, our flesh and blood body is, is is in is natural. Okay? There's things that we in the natural affect our our bodies. This wisdom, he says, descends not from above. Whenever we are operating in the bitter envy and strife and glory in it. And when we do that, he says, even lying against the truth. That's right. God us. This devilish is, is something I just want to, I, I wrote a couple of things down here I want to share. It, it says, <clears throat> that word devilish actually actually is demonic. It's demonic. Yes. It's, it's, it's of Satan. It's from Satan. It's engineered by Satan to try to his goal is to keep children of God from operating in the freedom and liberty given, afforded to us by Jesus Christ. So if we seek any other wisdom, if we seek anything outside of Jesus Christ, if we seek anything outside of Jesus Christ and Him crucified, we are seeking after the wrong wisdom. The wrong wisdom. There is so much out there. It doesn't really matter which one, it doesn't matter to Satan which one you choose. As long as you're not as long as you haven't chosen the correct way. It really doesn't matter to him. Because he knows that as long as you are looking unto that that is not right, you'll never get to where you need to be and do what you need to do for God. Doesn't, doesn't mean, doesn't necessarily mean that you're not saved, that you're not born again. But we should be aware of that. Miserably saved. We can be miserably saved. And even to the point, if we continue, I believe, if we continue in a false way, we can indeed lose what we have. I'm not the judge of that. I, I can't point my finger and say, well, you, you know, you're not saved. That's not my job. Amen. I didn't save you. And I can't tell you you're not saved. That's between the believer and God. But the, but, but the believer needs to realize the importance of it. The value of it. The urgency of the hour, if you can say. That it ain't, you know, that we shouldn't have the attitude of waiting until whenever. Whenever the scripture says that today is the day of salvation. We need to make the point today. We need to start today. 
We need to believe today. And, and just every day have that mentality. Today is today, today, today. I'm choosing. I'm going to continue. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep walking this walk. Because sometimes whenever discouragement comes, whenever, you know, bad news comes or disappointments come, the enemy is always right there to tell us, is, what's the use? Why don't you just quit? Why don't you just go do this or not do that? And, you know, God help us if we, you know, give in to that and get to come to our senses and come back and thank God that we can do that. But don't do it. Just don't do it. Choose to believe. Choose to be encouraged. Choose to be strengthened by the power of God working in us. And thank God for giving us a church family that we can, can be a part of. Because something that has really been stressed this whole year is how bad we really need each other. We need that. We need that in, in knowing that you know we're here for one another. And it's, it's good to know that we can come together and, and have the communion we have one with another here in the spirit of the Lord it's, it's not full of backbiting and confusion he says because for where ending and strife is verse 16 there is confusion and every evil work yes, yes. and another word for confusion is disorder mm -hmm. a disorder there is an order that God has for us. There is a correct order that as we walk and as we live, that we put our faith in that what He's already done for us. He's paid the price. Everything we ever need, He can supply everything we ever have need of. And we believe that. We're, there's an order that God wants us to follow. And confusion is not part of it. Confusion is disorder. It's, it's whenever, you know, you're, you're following directions on something. And it's step, step, step. I'm just, I just had to put a shelf together a couple days ago. And it was, you had to follow the step. Yeah. Well, if you went from step one to step 12, it ain't going to work. That's right. You've got to go each step of the way. you got to keep it in order. You got to keep your faith ever place continually in what Jesus has already done. That it's a finished work. Yes. That it doesn't need any adding to. Mm -hmm. That it, we don't say, well, I'm just going to help you on this part. No, we trust and believe that because you've done the work, then you can su then supply my every need. Amen. Even the things that people don't know about. Even the the private things, even things that, that only you and God may know about, God can handle it. He can supply what you need. He can give you what you need. Yes. Rest in that. Believe that. Know that he is the only one that can. Yes. Um, the spirit or the flesh is two different choices that we have to follow. And that we know that according to the correct teachings of the word, we are to choose to walk in the spirit. And then he says we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And, you know, I, I had a conversation with somebody one time, and they were commenting on somehow, it was somehow radio then. And we were, I, had it, I had it on where I was at. And... The brother made a comment and said, they think they're the only ones that's preaching the cross. <laughs> Our pastor preaches the cross. I said, well, praise God. I said, they just need to be more of them preaching. Yeah. You know what? I, another thing I believe about that in this is that when we do preach the cross, we need to preach it like nobody else is preaching. Yes. With the same sincerity. With the same fervor in our spirit. Because it's the only thing, if, 
if I can say it that way, that works in this Christian world that makes us into what we're supposed to be. The message of the finished work of Christ. You can it's, when they say that you're preaching it for salvation. Yes, yes. I'm saying it again. Yes. Not our, not our everyday living. Exactly right. They got the door and that's about as far as they got. Yes, that's true. That's right. So something too. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. But the, the, the mind frame I was on was on, on the demonic um, wisdom, the demonic activity that's involved in error. And, you know, it's, it's, so, it's so easily to be moved in if we don't stay focused in on the truth. And it, it, can, it can come in, and it has, and it's sadly to say he is deceiving millions of people because of spirits of darkness working, you know, through error and doctrine. The wisdom, this wisdom is not from above, he says.
that's that's a part of it as well. I want to continue reading. It says it is peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits. Talking about the wisdom that is from above, without partiality and without hypocrisy. It is without partiality that it's open to all that will receive this wisdom from above. It is there is no hypocrisy in it. It's a picture of true godliness, true piety. I've already said this, but it's practical. I mean, it's not one thing, you're exhibiting one thing, you're saying one thing, you're exhibiting something else. Verse 18, in the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The fruit of righteousness can, as well, talk about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of righteousness is, we continue in that, and Matthew 5 and 9, Jesus talked about how that blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Peace is, is but that must be a peace that's from within. And it's not just someone that externally is trying to be peaceful in, in our own strength, but it's letting God work that peace in them. You know, so you, you can't just take someone out there that's going out there saying peace, peace, peace. That doesn't mean they're a child of God. But the true child of God will exhibit peace, will show peace. They shall be the children of God. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to stop right there. We got to chapter 4. And uh, praise God, we'll just trust and believe the Lord gives us what we need. Amen. Next time we gather, amen. Thank y'all for being here. We're a part of the, of the